the opening scene of Parshas Vayetze contains a lot of very rich imagery, very detailed imagery that calls our attention to the Pasuk and the significance of this moment in Yaakov's life. Vayetze Yaakov mi Bershava, Vayela Harana, Vayifgaba Makom, he leaves one place, he goes to another, he encounters the place, the Makom. Vayalem Sham, and he goes to sleep. Vayikach me'avnei ha'makom, he takes the rocks. Vayaseh me'rash otav, and he puts them under his head. Vayishkav ba'makom ahu, and he lies down in that place. Over and over, the Pasuk gives us more and more detail of every single step of what occurred to Yaakov in this important moment. Chazal noticed that among all the details of the Pasuk is one grammatical inconsistency. The Pasuk says, Vayikach me'avnei ha'makom, it says that Yaakov took the rocks of the place, in plural, vayasem, and he put it, in singular, under his head, seemingly indicating that at one point there were many rocks, and then there was only one rock, which doesn't seem to be consistent. Either Yaakov took many rocks and put them under his head, or he took one rock and put it under his head, but, but not both. Whenever there's a textual or grammatical inconsistency such as this one, it is what gives Chazal, our sages, license in the Medrash and Gemaras to come in and say that the Torah was drawing our attention to something over here and that there must be a backstory to the Pasuk. The Medrash often comes to answer a textual question by giving us insight into what might, el- might have been happening outside the context of the Pasuk in specific, uh, in between the lines of the Pasuk uh, as well. And so in the case of this story, Chazal do exactly that. Chazal and the Gemara and Chulin notice the inconsistency of the Pasuk, and the Gemara and Chulin says, Ksiv, sorry, Ksiv vayikach me'avnei ha'makom, it says that he took from the rocks, plural of the place, the Ksiv vayikach sa'evan, and it says that he took one stone and put it under his head, so which one is it? Tosus actually points out, before I get to the answer of the Gemara, Tosus points out that it's not actually, in the technical sense, an inconsistency or incorrect statement of the Pasuk. Since the Pasuk is very careful to say, He takes of the rocks of the place, meaning there were many rocks in the place. He took of those rocks, meaning he could have taken one of those rocks and put that one rock on his head. So Tosu say that perhaps what the Gemara was indicating is not that there's something wrong with the grammar or the text of the Pasuk, but rather that the Pasuk could have stated this in a much simpler way, stating that Yaakov took many rocks and put them under its head, or took one rock and put it under its head. Why was the Torah specifically um, making the language more complicated, perhaps as Tosos, according to Chazal, to draw our attention to the Pasuk, to teach us that more was going on behind the scenes. Something else was happening, symbolically speaking, behind the story of these rocks. And that there were, in fact, symbolically speaking, many rocks and a singular rock, and each was of great significance. The Gemara says, very famously, most of you might be familiar uh, with this famous Madrash, this famous Gemara. It's quoted by Rashi on the Pasuk. Amr of Yitzchak, Melamed shenizkabtzu kol osan avanim l'makom echad. What we learn is that all the rocks that were in that spot, on that mountain, came together into the place where Yaakov was standing, getting ready to go to sleep. V'chol achas v'achas omeres, alay aniach tzadik zerosho. That symbolically speaking, there was an imaginary conversation that occurred between all these rocks as they all began to fight about which one would be the rock that Yaakov placed his head upon. And they really wanted the merit. They wanted the schus of being the rock that Yaakov slept on in this critical moment of his life when he was about to have this amazing dream of the ladder that goes towards the heavens, Malachi Elohim, Olim the Ardimbo, the angels of God going up and down and escorting Yaakov to this important stage of his life as he was about to leave the land of Israel and go to Laban's house and start his home and start his family and start uh, the rest of Jewish history. They were fighting over, they were fighting over that opportunity. Tana v'chula nivlu be'echad. What happens after they all fight? They all miraculously melded into one great stone. The many stones became a singular stone. And that singular stone was the one that Yaakov put under his head. And therefore, all the rocks really got the opportunity uh, to lie there under Yaakov's head and to have 
that merit. And that explains why the Pasuk first refers to many rocks and then a singular rock, because miraculously, the many became one. Other Gemara, uh, other Midrashim, sorry, fill in some more color and detail to the story of the rocks and adds a little bit of an added twist. So, for example, the Medrash of Reshit Rabbah has Yaakov saying in that moment where the rocks were coming together, if these rocks do indeed come together, I will know that I will be eventually the progenitor of the 12 tribes of the Jewish people. Meaning, I will know if in this moment these rocks, and seemingly according to this metric, there were 12 rocks, not many, many rocks, but 12 rocks in specific. I will know if these rocks come together that my family, my children, will eventually be transformed into 12 tribes, eventually transformed in, into the Jewish people. The Orgadal Yahu says that according to this Pasuk, according to this Madrash, according to this Gemara, there was something significant occurring here in Yaakov's lifetime and in the Pasuk for us to learn about the nature and the balance of individual and community. The 12 stones represent the multitude of people that exist in the world and that exist among the Jewish people. They represent different traits of individuals. They represent individuality. The one unified stone represents the trait of unity, the trait of achdus, the trait of the collective. He says, Avos shel We believe that the matriarchs and patriarchs were the source and the root of the Jewish people. Mehem yotzim yud zanafim, shem yud shvatim. And from them go out 12 different uh, branches represented by the 12 different tribes. By highlighting the number 12, by highlighting the multitude of stones, what the Medrash was teaching us is that the many tribes of the Jewish people each have their own strengths, each have their own traits, each have their own character, each have their own pathway in terms of their life, their mission, and definitely in terms of their service of Hashem. Therefore, he says, with that in mind, foreshadowing now a future event of Yaakov's life, he says, Lachain matzinu b'birchas Yaakov, uchmochen b'birchas Moshe Rabbeinu ala v'shalom b'zos ha We see later in Yaakov's life in Vayechi when he blesses the tribes, he blesses his children, and even Moshe at the end of his life in v'zos ha when he blesses the tribes, she'birchu l'chol shevet be'ofen acher, ko echad mehen l'fi ha'shore shalahem. They don't give one general bracha to all of the tribes. Each of them recognizes that each of the tribes is its own individual unit, that there's an individuality of great significance to each of the tribes because they each have their own modalities in terms of their service of God, and therefore their blessings reflect that. Yaakov's blessings to the children, to the tribes, represent his cognizance of the importance of individuality, the importance of every tribe being blessed according to its traits, its strengths, its shoresh, its roots, and what it has to contribute to the collective of the Jewish people, a recognition of the significance of individuality. However, he says, if you notice, these 12 rocks in the Medrash then become one, highlighting that not only is individuality important, but unity is important as well. And that too is reflected in the blessing that Yaakov gives to his children at the end of his life, because the summing, sum summation sentence of his blessings in the Torah is Ko'ele Shifte Yisrael Shnei Masar. These are the 12 tribes of the Jewish people. Vayivarechotam. He blesses them. Plural. Ish asher kibir chaso birach osam. He blesses each individual, meaning each individual child or tribe, according to his blessing. He blessed them. So Rashi points out on that Pasuk, why does it say Osam in the beginning of the Pasuk, Osam at the end of the Pasuk? Vayivarach Osam, he blessed them. Isn't that obvious? If he blessed every individual tribe, didn't he end up blessing all of them? No, says Rashi, there's a point to telling us that at the end of every individual blessing to the tribe, he blessed them. As the Orgadal Yahu says, She'achal kor ha-brachos she'birech ko'echad bepratius, after every blessing of individuality, he blesses them as a unity, as a whole, as one collective unit, representing Yaakov's keen understanding of the importance of individuality and the importance of the collective. A lesson that perhaps he learned, according to the Orga del Yahu, in this moment, 
with the story of the rocks. Perhaps that's what the Torah was conveying to us through this medrash, through the inconsistency of the pasuk of Avnei and Evan, of Avnei and Vayasem, teaching us that Yaakov knew in that moment that he would be the progenitor of the Jewish people because he saw that there would be an importance and there would be a recognition of the significance of both the individual, individual and of the collective. And the balance between the two would be what would lead eventually to a strong collective nation of individuals who have what to contribute. Because a collection of successful, disparate individuals is not what God intended for the Jewish people. And on the flip side, a nation that is unified, that is one, that is whole, but that is monolithic, is also not what HaKadosh Baruch Hu imagined. Imagine a nation of individuals that could each bring their own talents and their own traits and their own modalities to the people of Israel and to the service of God, and yet understand and recognize the significance of each other's paths coming together in one unified whole, respecting the individuality and respecting the collective. It's something difficult to achieve. We achieve it in a microcosm of our homes, of our schools, of our streets, of our shuls, of our communities, and we achieve it in the macrocosm of the entirety of the Jewish people and the Jewish world. And I think it's something that we can each work on, trying to hone in on what those traits are that we have, that we bring as individuals to the collective, and how we become also subsumed within that collective, strengthened by the unity of the Jewish people. Shabbat Shalom.